Hello, welcome back. I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen. How are you doing today? I'm kind of excited for what we're doing. But anyway, how many of you grew up with family picnics and stuff, family get togethers and stuff like that? I just feel, and I know my brother and I have talked about this recently, that it's going on the wayside of of traditions nowadays like when i grew up we had family picnics during the summer with my grandparents uh, i want to say often fairly often i remember that you know my grandma's lemonade sometimes we had kool-aid you know that was a treat for us um and then you know and then all the holidays right you got together and and you know that's it was a thing you did and I just loved them I cherished them and um my dad would do the same thing and I you know as an a, a parent now I understand where this came from but um he would have um picnics and you know just you know if you want to bring a side dish whatever or you want to bring your own drink um type of thing and and then um when my youngest son was a year and a half, um, I don't know what's with my hair, guys. I don't know what's with my hair. <laughs> when my son was a year and a half, my mom and I started what we called the, um, oh, geez, summer, annual summer holiday bash. That's what it was, annual summer holiday bash. And basically, we started it because my niece at the time um, lived with her mom, and she didn't get down to visit much except for in the summer and so we kind of did it and we were going to do holidays in it um the first year we had santa hats but we did like relay races and hula hoop races and we had a pie eating contest and we had family pictures and we had posters where the family put their handprints on and um it went on the 10th year was of course was it 2020 yeah it was supposed to be our our birthday social but it didn't happen we had a smaller one and the last two we haven't been able to do and it's really depressing the hardest part was actually getting people to cooperate and pick a date you know just one day I mean and everybody left happy and just you know excited and and you know this was great until the next year came and then you know, it just felt like we were pulling teeth trying to get people to put family first for once. You know, put family first. And it got really hard between my um, nephew's soccer ball uh, tournaments and my son's uh, rodeo uh, rodeos and, and my brother's and his kids' uh, stock or drag races. You know, everybody had their thing and... It's been so tough, but I really hope we get to do it this year. And, um, you know, that is, that is family so important. And I think we've been just stripped apart lately, but you know, what do you do for family traditions other than the holidays? You know, it's amazing how fast you can throw together a potluck picnic and just enjoy some family time. But anyway, yeah, I want to talk about that. But today, we are doing bath melts, bath truffles, bath mm, butters, whatever you want to call them. There's a few names for them. Um, I did these last year as chocolate-covered strawberries, and most people wanted to buy them to eat as candy. Um, but yeah. I'm going to end it with that because I'm going to talk about them all in the video. So three things. Stream big. Be true to you. You are worth it. Let's go check out these bath things. Okay. To our bath melts. I will be honest here. Um, this is not my actual, my normal uh, bath melt recipe. Um, Mrs. Soap and Clay put a series out, which was so fun, and she was spot on. Like, it's like everybody wants to do bath melts, and I've been planning this with my purple clay for a while. So, I am using her recipe because I wanted to see how it worked. 
how well it worked. Does that make sense? So I screwed up. So I started with my baking soda. And then I went with my citric acid, putting it right together. Yep, this time it's right together. And realized I doubled my citric acid. And what do you do when you screw up? Well, then you make a double batch. <laughs> so, and, um, oh, it's just me. Like, what else? Right, guys? What else? And then came my beautiful purple Brazilian clay. Now, I knew it wasn't going to be a, you know, like a beautiful purple, um, so, um, I did end up putting some mica in there, but okay, that's right. Uh, purple clay, 60% and 40% kaolin clay, just because, um, kaolin clay is great. It's great for all skin types. The purple Brazilian clay, um, has all these beautiful properties that I did not look up. So <laughs> I'll put them in the description. I'll try and remember. Okay. So all the, the clays and the baking soda and the citric acid go into one container and into my melting container, I have cocoa butter and shea butter. Um, it's a good thing I ordered shea. I've been going through it like crazy lately. Oh, I've been putting some in soaps, too. So that makes a difference, right? So I had to remember, I'm doubling it. I'm doubling it. Um, So I think it's one part cocoa butter, two parts shea is her recipe. Two parts baking soda, one part citric acid. She never had anything about clay, but this was my typical usage of clay in my other ones. So I went with that. Um, My cocoa butter was a little bit more, but that's usually not a problem. And then, um, her, um, we'll call it surprise ingredient was emulsifying wax, which, um, I will link you to her, her thing. And so you can see, and I thought that was a cool idea. You know, I think beeswax will not work the same guys. Um, melt it, heat it up, let it set for 15 minutes. So your shade doesn't get all gritty. I've never had that happen, but I guess I try and do make sure I let it sit for 15 minutes at a high heat. Just leave it in the microwave. And then the fragrance oil. What are we doing? What did I do? Oh, I did Love Spell by Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm kind of on a Love Spell kick, but that's okay. Totally okay, right? And then I did add some purple mica. Just a little. Just a little, because... Well, I did one on purple, and I wasn't sure about the clay. I did not know if the clay was actually going to pull through a dark purple or, you know, what it was going to do. And so a little mica is not going to affect anything. Actually, you can use more mica and, you know, really color it. You know what would have been pretty? Uh, well, but the purple clay. And say like a nice solid white would have been pretty, but I don't want to put titanium dioxide in that, you know. And then you just mix, 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 mix. It was pretty fluid. Mm, I didn't take a temperature of it at all. I did take a whisk to it because it was a little lumpy, you know, like short circuit says, uh, still lumpy. So I, and I added a little more mica because it looked a little brown. I didn't want brown hearts. I wanted purple, kind of purple hearts. <laughs> it's, 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 it is what it is. And there's my cute little heart molds. And then my beautiful rose petals from this summer's excursions. However, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I didn't take a temperature on this. So it was much more liquidy than I thought than I planned it to be. Um, so when I got to the one that has the little baby rosebud in it, um, this one right here, it floated. And I went, oh no, this is not good. Not good. So I took the rose petals out. <laughs> 
know, I know. I, I'm just one extravaganza of a mess over and over. I did pop them in the freezer for 15 minutes before taking them out of the mold just to be safe. And then I did my cocoa butter drizzle. I will show you how I do that. Um, if you want clearer colors, mango or cocoa butter might be another option for you. Um, a little more expensive, but you're only using a little bit. But so, um, here we go. So it's cocoa butter and melt it down. Uh, th so the ratio is just a little bit of cocoa butter and then your mica and then a little bit of, um, baking soda. I do this drizzle on my bath bombs and all that stuff and it's just cute. It just adds a little bit of cuteness to it. Like I said, I should have used mango on here um, just because my colors, you know, if I really wanted them to be um, a little bit brighter, mango would have been the better choice. I just, I usually do cocoa butter. And then let it cool just a little bit under 150 degrees. And then you just, <laughs> I couldn't figure out which hand to do it. Um, so you could see me and then you just drizzle it across just really quick. Um, smart thing to do. Uh, if you're doing more than one color, do one color, let it dry and then scrape the wax paper. Um, and then you can just reuse that cocoa butter. I wasn't thinking at all. I normally do that. I didn't on this one. <laughs> okay. So I took one that was broken in half. Um, to get them out of the mold, I did put them in the freezer just for about 15 minutes, just cause you know, that's me. But this is speeded up super, super fast. It took about three minutes overall. I just wanted you to see how they bloomed and bubbled and fizzed. Um, when you put them in the tub, make sure the water is warm enough cause it needs to melt the cocoa and the shea. Don't take a cool bath with it. And it actually cleaned up really nice. I was very impressed with it. And there you have it. Bath melts, bath truffles, bath whatever you want to call them. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for stopping by. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.